Across town at the Northern Nevada Literacy Council, Director Vicki Newell puts adult literacy into the big picture. Nevada is facing a challenge that really impacts our economy. Census data reflects that we have over 300,000 adults in Nevada that lack their high school diploma or their GED credentials. It's a concern of employers. Employers are having a difficult time finding employees with sufficient basic skills with what's now being called work social skills to function in the workplace, to be able to communicate effectively with coworkers, with supervisors, with customers. And particularly at this point in time with our unemployment rates increasing because of our economy, employers are very, very concerned. Adult education programs in Nevada want to be a part of the solution. We have 14 adult high school diploma programs in the state that are located within school districts and we have eight adult basic education programs in the state. These programs provide instruction in basic skills, uh, improve your math, improve your grammar, be able to write reports, uh, those types of skills. Uh, they provide English as a second language for uh, non-native speakers and they provide GED preparatory instruction. One of our newest additions to our adult education system in Nevada is Nevada GED Online. An internet-based course of study that helps a person prepare themselves to take the official GED practice test and we've just expanded accessibility of the program in all the Job Connect offices in the state. So we, we hope that with all these things working together, we can be truly a part of the solution that helps employers have a better qualified pool of employees. And now for a look at family literacy, Carmen takes us to the farming town of Urington, about an hour's drive southeast of Carson City. There are several family literacy programs going on throughout Nevada, but the one I want to show you today is one currently going on in the Lyon County Library. Let's take a look. Hi, Moran. Hi, Carmen. Welcome to the library. Thank you. We are very interested in finding out about your family literacy programs. Wonderful. Family literacy programs are really important in rural Nevada. This is one of my favorite spaces in the library. Um, it's the kids section, as you can see, and as we have our story times in here, um, our programs, we also have uh, senior programs in here. They seem to like to be around the little kids. Um, they like being a part of a family, which is what I think of this uh, library as, is a living room for the family. I guess you could call it a family literacy living room. Here's another section that I really like. It's the teen area. You won't find it uh, open right after school usually because the kids just come in and take this part over. Lots of times at school the kids don't fit into the sports pro programs and whatnot. There are very few resources that are available to them. The library is the place that they choose to come and we have in fact just recently started a junior friends of the library. We have a computer over there that they purchased with the money from their fundraising. Carmen, come on over here. I'd really like you to see this area. This is one that is used a lot by the seniors. Family literacy does indeed mean the whole family, and we'd like to cover our seniors as well. Some of them are not available to come here, so we have programs that are outreach programs where we have actually developed small collections for them to keep at long-term care. Another program is Bingo for Books, where they come in from their assisted living situations and can play bingo and actually collect books by way of that game. People may wonder why there's such an emphasis on family literacy. And we're talking from the very beginning, from the tiny babies to the seniors in the family, to grandma and grandpa, it's because one is linked to the other. 
when there's when we're talking literacy, we're talking about the changing of behaviors and families are the key to that. If we can reach the whole family as a unit, they begin working on this together and they're not isolated in their roles in their families. For instance, we have everything from Sesame Street in Spanish to mariachi music on DVD we have a host of items as well as those that for ESL to help people with their English skills. Oftentimes we have little kids coming in and they're reading to their parents. They're interpreting the library for their parents so that if the parents can then come along, they can partner with them in life um, tools in school, at the market, wherever they go in the community. My daughter is a 10 years old little girl that she is really in love with the library. She's always here. If she's possible for her, she can be here every day after school. So one Saturday she called me and she says, Mom, you have to come to the library. There's something in here that's really interesting you're going to fall in love with. So I came over and when I stepped at the door, I would just oh, take my breath away. <laughs> It really reminds me when I was um, a little girl in Mexico, where I grew up, and uh, everybody lose, used to carry the water like that in their heads, something they never learned. But it's, it's so beautiful, and it's really, it really touched me because I lived here in the United States for almost 22 years, so this is really amazing to me, and, and I love it. <laughs> And this one really reminds me of my grandma. She looks so much alike. I want to show you a picture of her. We have um, regular and rotating uh, exhibits. This one happens to be Vosis Latinus. And it's on loan from the Nevada Museum of Art by way of the Nevada Arts Council. This is a lithograph by Diego Rivera and it's called the fruits of labor. And it shows a, a woman and a man. The woman has the, the apples, which are the traditional symbols of knowledge. You can see the children gathered around them, taking the fruit and learning from the books. So there are more ways than one to teach our children. I'm really pleased to see an event like this come to Urington because 25% of our student population is Hispanic or from uh, Spanish-speaking um, homes and they really need to see some of their own culture to understand their background and their roots and where some of their ideas and their um, customs come from. So to see an art event like this in this community is great because we're meeting a cultural need. Um, for example, this painting uh, explains the Chicano movement and then my students that are learning Spanish got to see artists that are in that community um, and bring some of those things that I'm doing in the classroom to light. No matter what your cultural background is, we can all relate to this picture. I know I can. In this picture, we have a family. We have the grandma with her shoes off. Uh, we see the children. We see probably uncle here. We all have uncles. And we have uh, the little boy with the baseball bat and the dog. You might be interested to know that in Nevada, there are programs that use dogs to help children learn to read. To show us this special program, Carmen takes us to Henderson, a city adjacent to Las Vegas, and itself labeled one of the fastest growing cities in the country. Now we're in Southern Nevada at the Paseo Verde Library in Henderson. This town is growing rapidly and this library has several reading programs. Today we're here to learn more about a particular program called Reading with Rover. The city of Henderson has been exploding with growth for so many years. Though there's advantages to growth, our infrastructure, like our schools, have really suffered. Children that have been struggling readers have not been able to receive the one-on-one -on -one attention and help that they need. Let me show you something. 